Hello everybody! In this video, I'm going to show you how to combine conflicting customer names using Power Query, or as it's also known, the Bob, Robert, Bobby problem. So uh, let's uh, you know, let's just, without giving a lot of description, let's just kind of jump right into it and I'll, I'll show you what the problem is. So uh, I'm going to uh, pop over here to Power Query. I might click on this little button right there, and uh, we'll see... We'll see a situation in which we have a uh, customer's table, dim customers. It doesn't have a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> we've got a customer ID. We've got a phone number. We want to know uh, who is the name. What is the name associated with each one of these phone numbers? And the good news is uh, we know the names associated with these phone numbers. The bad news is there's uh, several, right? So uh, I come over here, right? Uh, apparently, we've contacted uh, these different people a couple different times, if you'll remember. We've got one, two, three customers. There's your phone numbers right there. And if we look here in the, the phone number lookup, right, uh, we see that uh, for this particular phone number right there, uh, sometimes they told us their name was Bob. Uh, sometimes they told us their name was Robert. Other times they told us their name was uh, Bobby. And here, uh, uh, one time we contacted this person. They said their name was Mildred. Then later on, they said their name was Millie. Uh, then this person with this phone number here, they said their name was Edward. Sometimes they said it was Eddie. Sometimes they said it was Ed. So uh, we can't just do a left join to this table because if we do, in fact, I'll, I'll show it to you why you, you absolutely cannot do that. If I do a left join, uh, you shouldn't do this in the real world. It, it'll be real easy to see here in our sample data, right? If I connect phone number to phone number, right? When I click OK and I go ahead and explode this out, the problem is uh, every single match will show up as a new row. So I'm going to uh, leave that checked right there, right? And uh, now we went from having one row per customer to having one row per customer's given name, which isn't at all what we want. So you can't do that. So what we need to do is we need to compress those lookup tables down, compress those lookup tables, or should I say condense those lookup tables down so that you don't have uh, one row per you know given name, or actually really one row per time we contacted these people. What we want is we want one row per phone number, and for each phone number, we want all the given names listed out with a comma between them. And uh, as you can sort of see here, I'm going to show you a slow way to do this and a fast way to do this. Let's start with the slow way. Now, uh, first, you probably won't have this in your data. I've got these spaces between the people just to make it easier to see. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those. So I'm going to click on phone number, control click on given name, head up to home and click on remove rows. And I'm going to remove blank rows to get rid of those blanks. Okay, you, you, this is probably what your data actually looks like or some variation on this. So what I want to do is I want to go, uh, I, I want to shrink this down. So instead of one row per uh, interaction, I got one row per phone number. So that's a hint that I want to do a group by, which is what I want to do. So I'm going to click on phone number and I'm going to right click and I'm going to do group by. Now again, this is the slow way of doing it. I'm going to show you a faster way in a minute. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to end up with is a new table that has one row per phone number and some sort of set of aggregations like uh, associated with each one of those phone numbers. So I could do the total number of rows associated with each phone number, right? And if I click OK, we'll kind of see what that is. This isn't what I want, but it does tell me for each phone number, this is the number of rows in the previous table. There were four names associated with that phone number, two names associated with that phone number, and three names associated with that phone number. Yeah, OK, that's cool, but it's not what I want. So I'm going to go ahead. In fact, I'll just I'll hit X to undo that step, and I'll just do it all the way again, right? I right-click on phone number. I do group by. Right? I still want to group by phone number, but I don't want the count rows. What I want instead is this mysterious last choice, all rows. Not sum, not average, not medium, all rows, right? And I'm going to call this new column name filtered records. Maybe filtered records. Assuming I could spell it, which is, you know, not very likely. Okay, so uh, the new column is going to be called filtered records. And when I click OK, instead of getting uh, the row count associated with each one of these phone numbers, the number of names, I've got this structured value right here. And if I don't, I don't click on the table, I click right off here to the side. <clears throat> what I could do is I could peek inside each one of these. So I could see for this phone number, we could see all of the records in the previous step associated with just that phone number. And I could see the two Bobs, the Robert and the Bobby, right? And if I come down here, right, I could see uh, both of the uh, names associated with that particular phone number, Mildred and Millen. If I come down here, I could see the names associated with uh, that number right there, right? Okay, good. So what I want to do is uh, for each one of these little tables, I actually want to pull out the given name right, the given name. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, head up here to add column and I'm going to do a custom column. And I'm going to call this new column list of names, right? 
And I'm going to say with dupes. The reason being is that uh, Bobby, or I should say Bob, appears twice in that first list. Right? So we're going to have to filter those out in a second. So what do I want to do? Well, uh, for each and every row, I want to go get the filtered records. And I want to go pull out the given name column. So I add an open square bracket, and I type in given name, just like this. Right? So uh, what do I want to do? For each row, go to the filtered records uh, cell. right? And in each cell, it's going to find a little bit of little teeny, teeny, teeny tiny table. And then with each one of those teeny tiny tables, it's going to go pull out the given name column into a list. And that'll be our new column right here. So we go ahead, hit OK. And there we go. So here we've got uh, a column with structured values where these structures are tables. And I could go see there's see if Bob appears twice. We're going to have to fix that. Robert and Bobby. Here I could see Mildred and Millie. And down here I could see uh, Edward, Eddie, and Ed. Right. Now uh, this has both the phone number and the given name. Here we have a list. So if I come up here, I just see uh, the name part, which is a little easier to work with, Mildred and uh, Millie. Okay, good. So what I want to do is uh, I need to clean these lists up. I want to just keep the distinct values. So I don't want Bob to appear twice. I only want Bob to appear once. So I'm going to go to Add Column again, go to Custom Column, right? And I'm going to call this List of Names. And here what I want to do is a list.distinct. There it is, list.distinct right there. And sometimes the IntelliSense helps you. Other times it does not. This is a good example of it not helping you. Notice when I hit tab, uh, now it says list list.distinct. I just want list.distinct. What is this going to do? It's going to take a list and just give me the distinct value. So I had opening parentheses. And I want to take uh, each, one of these, each one of these little lists and pass it into this function to remove all the duplicate values. Out of space and a closing parentheses. I go ahead, click OK. And boom, now I've got that list. And notice Bob uh, only appears once. In this one, there were duplicates. And in this little structured value, I've gotten rid of the duplicates. OK, fabulous. So now I can uh, get rid of these two columns right there. So I'm going to click on that one. Control click on that one. Right click and choose Remove Columns. Okay. And now what I want to do is I want to hit the bunny ears. I want to hit the bunny ears. Now, normally, most of the time when I've got a, a, a table that's got these structured lists in it, right? I hit the bunny ears and I use the top option to sort of explode it out vertically, which would get us exactly where we were a second ago. So I'm going to use this option that I don't use nearly as often, use nearly as often, I should say, called extract values, right? And what this is going to do is it's going to take uh, each name in that list and uh, create a new text string with them, you know, one after the other. And I could put a delimiter between each one, which is to say I want to have a special character between each one. And by special, I just mean a, a, a comma and a space, right? Now here I could pick comma, but I, I don't just want a comma. I want a comma and a space. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to come down here to custom and choose comma, ah, comma, space. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now for each phone number, I've got the list of names right there. And now I could use this uh, to attach these list of names to my dim customers table. Speaking of which, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I come back up here to dim customer. I go to home. I go to merge queries. And I'm going to merge this against the phone lookup numbers uh, slow. It's the slow version. And I can connect these two based on phone number. Click on phone number up there. Click on phone number down there. And I go ahead and click OK. And now I hit the bunny ears. I uncheck use original column name as prefix. Uncheck phone number because we already have phone number in there. And I go ahead and click OK. And boom, now I've got a list of names. So when I get on the phone with these uh, folks, right, uh, I can at least have a list of potential things to call them. And I sort of have to pick which one I want to use. But at least I can see all the different things that they have said that their name is. Right? OK, let's do the same thing. Uh, let's do it slightly faster. Let's do it slightly faster. I'm going to come down here to phone names, phone number lookup faster. Right? Uh, once again, I've still got those uh, blank rows in there. So I'm going to start by getting rid of those. So I click there, Control click there. And I head up to Home, and I click Remove Rows, and I remove blank rows. Now, actually, I bet. I bet if I come up here on this uh, little thing, I did that kind of fast. At the top left-hand corner of each table is this little button right here, which you probably haven't even noticed before. There's all kinds of options. It's the same stuff that you see up here in the ribbon, but sometimes it's a little faster to get to. And uh, let's see. I don't see remove blank rows, so I guess we actually do have to do it this way. So that was a bit of a diversion. Don't come in here looking for remove blank rows. It doesn't exist. You have to do it using the ribbon. So I click on phone number, control click on given name, go to home. Remove rows, and let's remove blank rows. There we go. Okay. 
So just like before, I need to get this table down to one row per phone number, not one row per you know time we interact with them and ask for their name. So what I'm going to do is uh, before I actually use the group by, I'm going to start by getting rid of the duplicates because it's a little bit easier here, right? So uh, I'm going to make sure that I have both columns selected, right? If you've got one column selected, you'll get results that you don't want. So make sure you've got both columns selected or all columns to be actually be more specific. I head up here to home, head to remove rows again, and click on remove duplicates. There we go. Now I've gotten rid of that duplicate Bob, right? So Bob only appears once per phone number. Good. So that's a little bit faster. Now what I want to do is I'm going to right click on, I'm going to left click on phone number, then right click on it because I just want to group by phone number, right? So I've got both of them selected and I just left click on phone number. I right click on this. I go to group by, right? And now this is going to be a bit of a hack. It's going to be a bit of a hack. So let's call this new column name, uh, I don't know, list of names, right? And in the operation, I'm going to do something that doesn't make any sense at all. I'm going to do a sum of the given name column. Uh, now, uh, this should jump right out at you and say, this absolutely won't work, right? I can't add Bob, Robert, and Bobby. Those are text strings, not numbers. I told you this was a hack, and I told you it was faster, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use this to have a Power Query write the code for us, and then we're going to just sort of tweak it a little bit, okay? So uh, what do I want to do? Get, go get all the phone numbers, each, each uh, unique phone number, and for each one, I'm going to take the sum of the given name column. And I click OK, and I get a bunch of errors, which is what I expect. I can't add up text strings, right? But what you'll notice is if you look up here in the uh, formula bar, in the formula bar, it's written all this code for us, and we can actually hack this just a little bit, right? And if you can't see the formula bar, you head up here to view, and you can turn the formula bar off or on. We're going to need it on for this particular hack, right? So up here, uh, you'll see in this section where it says list of names, right? This is the formula for that, you know, uh, column right there. It says, hey, for each uh, row, Go get the uh, go take the sum of the list associated with that given name column in the in the previous step, right? So what we could do is here where it says list.sum, right? We go ahead and just delete that part. We delete the list.sum in the opening parentheses, and we have to remember to remove the closing parentheses on the end of it, right? And now instead of uh, for each one of these cells giving us the sum of the given names, it's just going to give us a list of the uh, given names. So I'm not quite done, but I'm going to go ahead and enter just so you can see uh, sort of where we're going, right? And now, uh, instead of getting an error, we get a list for each one of these guys. Now, don't click on the list, but if you click right off in the middle, you can see Bob, Robert, and Bobby. And if you click right in the middle there, you can see Mildred and Millie. And if you click right in the middle there, you can see Edward, Eddie, and Ed. Okay, good. Now, uh, there's one thing that we forgot to do, and, I, and I, I maybe forgot's not the right word. I waited to do. If you'll notice, it still seems to think that this column is text because that's what the code says at the very end. Here where it says type nullable text, uh, that means the type of this column is text, which gives the user interface some hints on what we could do with it. Now, this isn't text anymore. This is a list. So I'm going to come over here, and instead of saying type nullable text, I'm going to say type nullable list. You have to type it incorrectly. Type nullable list. Okay, now I'm not going to hit enter. I'm going to click on the little checkbox because I think it actually... I get fewer errors when I do that. Now, it looks like the exact same thing. It looks like nothing has changed. But if you'll notice, instead of saying ABC up here, it's got this little, I mean, it looks like a grocery list. And more importantly, it's got these bunny ears that we like so much, right? So now with the bunny ears, we could go ahead and click. We could do the same exact thing we did before. Instead of expand new rows, we're going to do extract values to say, hey, go get all the values in that list and just put a comma between them. And actually, more specifically, a comma and a space. Hey, what do you want to put between each one of the items in this list? A comma and a space. So I click on this, I go to custom, click there, I type in comma space, I go ahead, click OK. And now I've got a phone number and a list of names. In fact, I'm going to double click on this and call this list of names again, because this is the second time we've done this. Okay. So now uh, it's the exact same uh, table we got on the slow version. It's a little bit faster, right? And I can take this same table and attach it to dim customers, and you will get the same results. Just to show you us doing that again, I head over here to dim customer, I go to home. I go to merge queries. I'm going to merge against my phone number lookup faster. And I'm going to join phone number to phone number. I go ahead and I click OK. And now I could click on the bunny ears and pull out that list of names again, that second list, the one that we got from the faster version. And I get the exact same results, just a tiny bit faster. OK, well, I sure do hope that was helpful. And I will see you in the very next video. 